take a look at all of this equipment right here. Crews have been working since the weekend to clean up mud, clean up roofs, repair roofs, and replace flooded carpets all at Albuquerque Public Schools. Yeah, this is after the massive flooding we had on Friday. You know, Albuquerque High was hit the hardest here. Crews have fans blowing in the Performing Arts Center. They're trying to dry out the flooded stage and the carpet. A portable here was also flooded. Plus, the district says at least six inches of water covered the roof at the height of the storm. Just had so much water and so much collection of water on the roof, it just couldn't get rid of all the water through the drains. It was overflowing. We had water coming through the doors. We had a lot of water in the courtyard. Albuquerque High is one of 16 APS schools crews went out to after the storms on Friday. The district says it'll cost about $100,000 to fix all the damage, but the schools should all be open and everything should be done by the time school starts. That is a week from today. Well, UNM is also cleaning up its own mess, a mess that unfortunately seems to keep on growing. We've now learned at least 30 buildings were damaged by the flooding Friday, and one was struck by lightning. Well, the saddest story is here with Hodgen Hall. It's 123 years old, the first building on campus, and part of the ceiling collapsed. Water flowed through the building's parlor and down the walls. The original wood frames are warping, and so are the wood floors. Uh, there was water damage on three floors of the building. It, it makes your heart uh, sink a little bit because it's a proud, proud building, and you know it when you walk in it. It's the Alumni Center. We know it will be again because although the physical damage to Hodgen Hall is extensive, UNM says nothing irreplaceable was lost, thank goodness. Now, there is still a question about what can be salvaged from the Centennial Library where shelves of old, unique documents were soaked. Damage in other buildings varies from wet sheetrock to crumbling ceiling tiles. There's even a blown out HVAC system because of the lightning. UNM says this will not affect any classes. Liz. New Mexico mother accused of kidnapping her own three children nearly two decades ago will be allowed to stay at a halfway house, at least for now. Eileen Carl took her children, who were two, five, and seven at the time, from Placitas in 1995 after her husband asked for a divorce. She was found in London in 2008, but it took six years to get her back here to face charges. Prosecutors argue she is a flight risk, but federal magistrate court ordered that she be released to a halfway house. Prosecutors are appealing, but there is a fight over the proper way to do that. In the meantime, Clark will be released to that halfway house. But at 603, it's a story that's really hard to forget. A woman in Albuquerque found bound, naked, and dead in her home. Happened a month ago. Now people living near 86th and Bridge are anxious. They're waiting for police to tell them something about Danette Webb's death. Well, I think maybe they're not giving us information because maybe they have something that's maybe they're really close to that might pertain to someone maybe around here. So the neighbors here gathered last night as part of the national night out, hoping to start a neighborhood watch. They also invited someone from the city who's in charge of crime prevention to talk specifically about the case and how to make their neighborhood a safer place. Well, police lieutenant showed up and spent nearly two hours talking with folks about how to keep their neighborhood safe, but he did not have any information to share about Danette Webb's case. The New Mexico Rail Runner is making major changes in the wake of two deadly accidents involving bicyclists in Santa Fe. In April, a cyclist drove in front of the train as it crossed Zia Road. It happened again two months later at the St. Michael's Drive crossing. In both cases, the cyclists were using the pedestrian crossing. Augusta Myers with the Rail Runner says it was a wake up call. So as of yesterday, the commuter train service is slowing down trains running through town and has added guards at five crossings. Every time a train is going north or south through one of the crossings in Santa Fe, there will be a person, a flagger with a flag on the track. Now we did spot one of those flaggers right there, keeping a biker back from the tracks yesterday. Meyer says 10 people will serve as rail runner crossing guards on a typical weekday. Service, by the way, will only run a minute or two slower. Well, the Veterans Administration here in New Mexico says wait times did not have an effect on veterans dying here, at least in the cases it's looked at so far. The investigation found almost 190 veterans died while waiting to see a doctor, but the investigation found no link between how long those veterans waited and them dying. VA is also taking a look at veterans who are still on the waiting list. It says as of last week, 248 vets were on a waiting list here. That's down from 353 two weeks ago. And get this, 1,000 back in May. 
Outside, investigators are also taking a closer look at the vet's dying and the long wait times. Well, Congressman Steve Pierce and two other members of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs are holding a field hearing in Roswell today. The topic, well, it's all about the challenges rural America is facing with the VA and the mental health care system. The hearing is this morning at 11:15. You can go. It's at the Roswell Convention Center. Then later, Congressman Pierce will be meeting with medical officials in the area. And Congressman Pierce and other officials got a firsthand look at a temporary detention center in Artesia that houses immigrants, women and children who have come here illegally from Central America. Congressman Pierce said last week the deportations were stopped from here because two people got chicken pox. About 600 women and children are still being held at this federal facility in Artesia. ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, has stopped accepting toy donations for kids there, saying it's been overwhelmed with gifts. Next week, the U.S. Secretary of Energy will be visiting WIB. Word this morning is that Secretary Ernest Moniz will visit the underground nuclear waste repository near Carlsbad. He's scheduled to visit WIP Tuesday, to be exact, for the first time since the February 14th reaction that sent radioactive particles into the air above the repository. The leak contaminated 22 workers with low levels of radiation. A warning this morning from the State Poison Center about a product that has already claimed the life of one teenager, powdered caffeine. It's becoming very popular among kids and teens. It is easily found online and very difficult to measure properly, leading to possible overdose. In May, an Ohio teen died after ingesting too much of the product. Even if you don't overdose, it could cause problems. It can cause nervousness, sweating um, at doses slightly above um, the safe range and in higher amounts can cause life-threatening events like seizures and heart rhythm problems. The FDA is looking at regulating powdered caffeine products but recommends people avoid them altogether.